We had a question from YouTube. David has something for us. I have loads of nice clothes, but I end up wearing my old clothes instead because I'm scared of ruining the new ones. It's always on my mind when I try to put them on and it's starting to impact my mental health. How do I get rid of all the old things and start wearing all the new things without worrying about what happens to them? I'm thinking about fear here because essentially you're afraid of something happening to these new nice clothes, right? And I get that. I've owned something that I put in my closet and I'll try it on and I'm like, ooh, but I don't want to wrinkle it up. (laughs) It's like, well, wait a minute. Fear is merely a byproduct of the ego, Mm. right? And Mm -hmm. so the ego is what? Telling me a story about the thing. It's telling me to be afraid. Let's talk about what the antidote to fear is real quick. The antidote to fear is joy. Mm. And... Joy is one of those things that we we know it when it's there, but I don't think we really understand it. So mm-hmm. let's do an etymology lesson real quick. Uh, the, the Greek word for joy is Cairo, which comes from the root caress, which means gift. Mm. And so in a way, when we are joyous, we're experiencing a gift, a gift of life. Or when we are being joyous, we're also giving a gift to someone else in a way. When we're doing the opposite, we're doing what? We're worrying all the time. Well, to worry is to pray for something bad to happen in the future. And that is what David is doing here. And I'm saying this as a worrier. I am a poster child for worry. So I'm not I'm not standing on some sort of mount preaching this to you. I'm making an observation about worry. Whenever I worry about something, The only thing that I can do that dissipates the worry is to see the absurdity of the worry. And that quite often makes room for joy, which then eliminates the fear that I'm experiencing. I'll give you an example. Recently, we actually had to reschedule this podcast recording because I was trapped in Ojai, California Mm -hmm. during the rains. I was talking to my neighbors. They had been there for, my next door neighbor has lived in that house for 40 years. And the most rain they've ever experienced was on Monday of this week. There were 17 inches of rain at the, uh, in the, the mountains there at, in Ojai. And you could see it was pouring. Our streets were flooded. The Ventura River is not usually a river. It is a riverbed. (laughs) But it not only overflowed, but it clogged up the highway. The reason the 101 was closed was because the Ventura River not just exceeded its limit, but but burst through its limits, Mm -hmm. right? And so what happened? Of course, I felt worry. Oh no, what happens if my house Floods. Mm. Okay. Well, then my house floods. It's going to be an inconvenience, right? A giant inconvenience. But do I have insurance? Mm. Mm. Yes, I do. And so it's okay to be concerned about these things. The concerns point toward, okay, what caution do I need to have? Well, it mm. makes sense to have flood insurance. Mm. makes sense to have homeowner's insurance. Mm. But if my house were to flood, if my house were to burn down, this also happened about a week ago. I was walking home with Bex and we saw fire in our neighbor's yard, well, we didn't know it was our neighbor's yard. I, I thought it was our house at first. Mm. And their barbecue had caught on fire. But I thought, uh-oh, I hope that isn't our house. And mm. I felt worry in the moment. But then I realized, okay, what's the worst thing that could happen here? And so, David, the thing that I see here is I'm going to ask myself, what is the worst thing that could happen? I want to take this to its terminus. Because what's the worst thing that could happen if you got rid of the old clothes. You yeah. wear the new clothes and you don't enjoy them? Okay, say it out loud. Write it down. I might not enjoy my new clothes as much. Yeah. Okay. I'll take it even farther. What if you got rid of all the new clothes and just kept wearing the old clothes? What's the worst thing that could happen? I'd probably have less clutter and maybe I'd think about the things I let go of. Maybe, but maybe you'd also make some room. What's the worst thing that could happen? If you keep going, okay, maybe I'll miss those clothes. Okay. What's the worst thing that happens then? I don't know. Oh, yeah. There is no worst thing that's going to happen here. And if you take that fear, that worry to its terminus, you'll realize that the thing you've built up in your head is absolutely absurd and you can let it go Mm. because there's nothing to actually be worried about. (laughs) This makes me think about a pair of uh, um, white boots 
that I bought in high school. Oh, I forget the brand. It doesn't matter. There were brand. lugs. Yeah, lugs. That's what it was. Yeah, lugs. Is that really it? Yeah, yeah they it were. Was, I was, was there. Bright I love white. when you guys remember things for each other. Like <laughs> yeah, <that>. right. <laughs> Bright white lugs. I remember and these. I remember the first day of school, I'm like sporting these and my buddy comes up to me. He's like, how did you get the coolest shoes in school, man? I'm like, yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate it. But, you know, being the messy minimalist that I am, um, <laughs> I dirty them pretty quickly. And it got to a point where I'm like, oh, wow, I can't wear these as much as I want to because I'm going to dirty them. And uh, I found myself kind of getting stuck in this cycle that, da- that uh, David's in. And what I finally accepted was, is like, I am not responsible enough to have white shoes and that's okay. I'm willing to accept that. Um, I'm not, I don't take care of them well enough. So, um, yeah, I, I wore them, um, as much as I could until, you know, finally they were just, I mean, you know how white shoes get and I got rid of them and I never bought white shoes again because I learned my lesson my <laughs> sophomore year of high school in, in Lebanon, Ohio. But, but David, these new clothes that you have, they're going to be old clothes soon. I mean, soon enough, they'll be old clothes. So wear them while they're new. Um, You know, I I think clutter is a concept that uh, not only applies to things that are useless, but it also applies to things that are useful in a way that distracts from the life we really want to live. Imagine if I'm addicted to a video game and, you know, I play this video game 12 hours a day. And every time I look up, I think, oh, no, that's not what I wanted to do with my time. That video game was useful. I'm using it. But it's getting in the way mm. of what I really want to do with my time. And so it's not about labels like, is it useful or is it useless? It's about the experience of meaning. It's about that adventure of being alive. And someone else may be able to point to my experience and say, well, that's a useless thing. You should get rid of it. But maybe it creates value for me. Or someone may look at something else in my life and say, oh, that's very pragmatic. Everyone has one of those. Keep it around. But maybe it gets in the way of what I want. And for me, it becomes clutter. You don't want a life that you can justify by appealing to fancy labels. You want the experience Mm. of meaning. And so whether you call it clutter or someone else calls it clutter, just strip all that away and say, man, am I doing what I want to do with my time and with my energy? Am I experiencing the life that I want to live? Am I wearing what I want to wear? Or is this stuff simply getting in the way? Mm. Did you enjoy this standalone Patreon highlight? If so, you can listen to full episodes of The Minimalist's private podcast available exclusively on Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash The Minimalists or click the link in the description. Your support keeps our podcast and YouTube channel 100% advertisement free.